Yeah, Neko Taku from Neko Taku TV here. Um, this month is Autism Awareness Month, so I really wanted to make this video before the month ends. Autism, aka ASD, short for Autism Spectrum Disorder, is a neurological condition uh, which can cause problems with social interaction. It causes restricted and repetitive patterns in interests and behavior as well as things like stimming, sensory issues, uh, fixated interests, or the need for routine. So in this video, I'd like to give some insight into how I function because of my autism uh, by going through some autism traits, uh, which I hope will help people understand autistic people better. And if you relate to any of these things, it alone does not mean that you're autistic, but it might help you get on the track of discovering that you're autistic. And before we start with the list, uh, I'd just like to say that autism is a very wide spectrum. Uh, some autistic people might have a few traits, some many traits, some negative, some positive. Um, and the list of my traits is bigger than this. Social norms. Social norms cover a huge number of things. It includes things like eye contact, uh, phrases that people use when greeting or leaving, small talk, things people say and do just because everyone else does it or in order to make conversation smoother or to fit in. As an autistic person, I don't work this way. Either I don't understand or I dislike the social norm or I'm not even aware of it. A common one is asking how someone is asking without really wanting to know, which to many autistic people doesn't make any sense. One specific thing I do is that I will seemingly randomly say something disconnected to the conversation because I'm either scared I'll forget it or I didn't get the chance to say it, so I say it anyway. Or I did forget it at one time, so I bring it up another time. Which seems, you know, random and disconnected. Eye contact. Yes, a very common trait with autistic people is to be avoiding eye contact. I dislike eye contact. Uh, it's not natural to do a lot of it for me. Um, for me, it feels too intimate and disturbing and uncomfortable. I will sometimes try. Usually, look. I usually look at people in the face a couple of times, but for the most part, I'm looking somewhere else. Even if it's just a one-on-one -on -one conversation, I understand the use of it to some extent, uh, but I think it's overrated. Um, I'm very interested in why we have this trait. I wonder, could it have something to do with uh, the instinctual behavior found in some animals? Honesty. This is a huge one for me. I'm extremely honest. I cannot say I can't lie or never ever lie, but I really believe that it's very likely that I'm the most honest person you've ever met. I would rather be silent uh, or cause myself to suffer than to tell a lie for someone's benefit or my own. One reason for this is the desire to avoid misunderstanding and miscommunication. It fits autistic people well since uh, a big part of autism has to do with the disconnect with other people. Honesty and truth are two extremely important things to me, but of course not everyone likes extreme honesty. Intense interests, also called special or fixated interests. This is one of those traits that can be, po uh, be a positive ability. The ability to focus very hard and for a long time on something and to retain a lot of detailed information about something. Unfortunately, I'm not good at remembering things uh, even if I find them interesting. One of my biggest interests if not the biggest, is linguistics. I love talking and researching about language. It's like a drug for me. It 
gives me a feeling like nothing else does. Even if someone has a big interest, they might not be able to stay focused for very long or go very deep into it. I can keep going for many hours and have the desire to understand every detail. And this is also how it can be a negative trait where you are so into something that you neglect important things or cause yourself fatigue or other problems, you know. Once I played uh, Smash Brothers for 16 hours straight until I literally felt nauseous. That's how much I love Smash. Sensory issues. This can be anything related to smell, sight, sound, touch. I don't have many problems related to this. Uh, my main issue is bright light as well as things flashing very intensely or moving very fast. A few sounds like uh, porcelain hitting itself uh, or a clock ticking can be very disturbing. I've always wondered how the hell some people can have their phones and monitors at such high brightness. Mine are always at the lowest or very low or else it'll hurt my eyes. Um, and VRChat has helped me discover more about this. There, there can be some very disturbing effects happening on this platform that I never uh, came across before in my life. Sarcasm and jokes. Most of the time I understand when it's serious or not. Sometimes I'm leaning towards one or the other, uh, but I'm uncertain. And sometimes I just miss it completely. I stop and I wonder, usually, if someone is being serious or not. It can really get uncomfortable or I have to ask. So not only can it be hard to understand when it happens, but it can also be a problem when it comes to asking for clarification. People might think you're stupid or annoying, at least that's what I'm afraid of. And I remember that some people in school who didn't like me um, suddenly would be really nice to me for something seemingly ordinary. And then went back to the way they usually are. I never really understood why this happened. Um, I'm guessing they displayed some kind of sarcasm I wasn't able to detect. Structure and planning. I basically require some kind of structure and routine uh, and planning in my life in order to function well enough. I make lots of lists, to-do lists and other kinds of lists. Uh, I have a routine every morning, things I want to get done every day. I plan my chores and purchases and so on. If my plan change or, uh, you know, suddenly or something goes wrong with my plan, etc. I can get quite upset or just give up. Change very much connected to the previous trait uh, is the inability to handle change well. When something changes for the worse or even if it's just sudden or unplanned it can cause me anxiety. I like repetition and knowing what's coming. Uh, I try avoiding hope and expectation so that it doesn't hurt. I was a lot worse when I was a kid and things didn't go the way I wanted. Switching tasks. I'm not good at switching tasks suddenly or easily. Most of the time it has to happen my way. I need to either reach a certain point before I move on to something else or uh, I have to be done with whatever, whatever I'm doing. I like uh, doing things in order and in sections. That doesn't mean I can't multitask or can't handle jumping between activities. Uh, so it's not a big problem for me. For example, to the extent that it's a problem that I've noticed is that at sometimes I hold myself longer than I need to when I want to pee. Just because I haven't finished a video or finished reading something. It's really strange. I could just go up and pee and continue, but for some reason I want to do it this way. Uh, one of the few things I don't understand about myself and isn't logical. Vague questions slash answers. Oh, this one I could rant 
a lot about. Um, if I ask a question, that is what I want to know. So, I expect you to answer the question that I asked. Uh, now, it's okay if they don't want to or can't answer the question. Please tell me in that case. However, some people will answer my question with something else something that isn't the direct answer to my question as if I ask something else or as if they expect me to be able to find the answer to my question within their response I don't understand it and I find it very frustrating it causes me either to misunderstand make a guess repeat myself or ask more questions about the same thing this can make me be annoying to them and can cause miscommunication. Yes and no questions are the worst. Uh, when they answer with a statement and somehow I'm supposed to be able to decode this statement and find the answer in it. And same goes the other way around. Um, though this is not as bad. Um, but I have a problem with open-ended questions. I need a certain amount of data in order to answer my questions so that I don't answer something that wasn't really asked or answer with false information. To me, communication between people is extremely important. Formal speech. I don't do it as much as I want to, uh, but I really like formal or fancy speech words and phrases and I do use some words that aren't used as much in informal situations I believe I don't know why I love it and it's mostly when it comes to English I quickly made a simple sentence to demonstrate what I'm talking about though I would not want nor be able to speak to this extreme at all times <coughs> I, I myself, myself am not, am not of, this, of world, this world, nor do nor I wish to wish subject to myself, myself to it, to it. Hence, hence why I am leaving tomorrow. tomorrow. Trendy lingo. Continuing on the path of language, one of my traits as an autistic person is that I don't easily or quickly adopt trendy lingo, as I would call it. Most of my time is spent online, and online is where language changes the quickest. Sometimes I don't know what people are saying or what they mean with these words I don't recognize. I don't like most of these phrases that come and go or that are still around, but just doesn't fit me. It's annoying, but I don't hold it against people. Uh, best example could be LOL, LOL. I've almost never used it uh, in my life. It's weird and I have no use for it most of the time. This thing, of course, connects to herd mentality and the desire to fit in, which I don't subscribe to. I might look at a new word and be like, what is this for? Do I need it? Is it good or bad? How long would it last? I might think I already have a sufficient library of vocabulary for this topic. If I adopt a new word, I want it to stay with me forever, like... Uh, Booba. And the last one on my list, literal literal thinking and speaking most of the time I take things literally it's confusing for me and others and a struggle uh, but I'm still learning trying to understand people and help people understand I think sometimes I know what people actually mean but that doesn't mean that I like it or that I will use it myself of course I'm not 100% literal I can be hyperbole and use of use figure of speech uh, but I do it less than most I hate when people say something they don't mean or mean something else with what they're saying I just take things as they are said and I mean only things that I say I do love metaphors though thank you for watching my video Nya. I hope you learned something uh, I love spreading awareness about autism. If you have a question, put it in the comments or tell me about your autistic traits. 
またにゃー。Oh my god. <laughs> Is that I don't easily fuck, stop, stumbling, focus. <laughs> These videos would be a lot harder to make if, if I had eye tracking. Obviously, that would be a worthy sacrifice because eye tracking would be amazing, but I'm using a screen in front of me where I read off the script that I made. But I really believe it's very unlikely I'm. Huh? But I really believe that it's very unlikely I'm. No, I'm, I keep saying unlikely. That's the that's the mistake. It's very likely. Or be done with whatever with whatever whatever I'm doing. <laughs> I need water. <laughs> How many are there? Holy shit! Oh my god! <clears throat> oh, my arm. Meow. <sighs> <sighs>